tonight, the White House is confirming a new national security threat, that Vladimir Putin's Russia is hell-bent on putting an anti-satellite system into space. The Republican chair of the House Intelligence Committee first set off alarms, and now a U.S. official tells CNN that the threat may not be a weapon designed to attack humans, but it is still cause for concern inside of the Pentagon. For more on this, I want to bring in astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's the author of Accessory to War, the Unspoken Alliance Between Astrophysics and the Military. Yeah. Hi. Scary, Thanks for having me. Scary stuff. It's all scary. Um, you have been raising concerns about this for years. So these new revelations, what do you make of where this fits in? Well, so people have been concerned forever about the militarization of space. But in fact, ever since we've had access to space, in a way it's been militarized because mm -hmm. it's been used as a high ground for spying. Right. And it turns out to be not especially useful for parking weapons that you would then deploy later. Because space, you can't just stay there, you're in orbit. And if you want to deploy a weapon, you kind of have to be near where your target is supposed to be for you to hit it. Meanwhile, we already have intercontinental ballistic missiles. Right. You can launch a missile from any place on Earth and hit any other place within 45 minutes. So space-based weaponry is has been overplayed in the in the in movies and in yeah. our fears, but Really, another factor is, if you're going to go up and start smashing satellites, that's, uh, forgive the expression, but it's like peeing in your own bathtub because you make a mess yeah. of all of space. Well, I mean, explain, just to take a step back here, sure. I mean, this, we're talking about what is being described as a nuclear-powered device that could jam satellites. What does that mean for just a, a regular layman? Well, I haven't seen the reports, yeah. so, and there's a lot still to be disclosed, but... There are ways, there are multiple ways of disabling other satellites. One of them is to smash it, but that's bad because then you create particles that could hurt your own satellites that might be passing through that zone. Another way is to just disable them electronically. They all use electronics. And the worry that it's nuclear powered to enable, you don't, you don't need nuclear, there's plenty of sunlight there. <laughs> you use solar pa panels to give your energy. So the idea that it's nuclear powered, I find. I, I'm not entirely hmm. convinced that that's a, like a strategic move. Maybe there's something that we don't know. Well, about plus, if you detonate a nuclear device in a vacuum, most of the damage that you would ever have on Earth comes from a blast wave moving through the air. And if there's no air, the only damage the explosion would give you is you can get an electromagnetic pulse out of it, but or there would be sort of radiative damage. But you can, but then that's so messy. And I'm just thinking militaristically. Yeah, I mean, you could I, target you could target a laser at a at a sensitive part of a satellite and just dis disable it. You don't have to like blow stuff up. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is part of this the story that I think might be confusing to people, yes. which is, what's the point? What could Russia be trying to accomplish? And I mean, with all things, we were talking about the space race earlier there's going to be a competitive nature of this. If you start to see Russia doing it, you're going to start to see China and the United States. What are the implications hence, of that? Hence the birth of our Space Force. Yeah. All right? They're tasked with protecting our assets in space and making sure that our... Not only protecting the pre-existing assets, but making sure that our future access to space is not denied mm. by an adversary. So this is, like, part of the prime directive in the service of American security. Uh, I, I can tell you that the, uh, in terms of destroying another satellite, like I said, there are already ways to do that. There are these sort of what they call kinetic kills, where you can take a missile, no explosives necessary at all, because the satellite's already moving 18,000 miles an hour. All you have to do is get in its way, and the thing explodes. Russia's done it, China's done it, yeah. we've done it, India has done it. So to, and then you can target the satellite at will. If you're stuck in orbit, you might not be near a satellite that you want to take out. You have to wait until the orbits line up. This has just seems so inefficient. Yeah. So so I, I'm, I'm just skeptical of how dangerous this thing can be relative to everyone's emotions attached to it. It seems to suggest that there's, there's probably some more to the story here about what's really going on. It seems like also the United States is not super concerned about this in this moment. They say this could be some years away for whatever this is to actually 
to be materialize deployed. Right. and be deployed right. out into space, right. so, into the universe, uh, I should like, say. Like I said, anything that people fear of it, we already have the capability of accomplishing. Right. It's just maybe a different version of possibly a different version. Yeah. Electromagnetic pulse is interesting. You can send a, a pulse of electromagnetic energy that basically fries all electric circuits in in a in, in a region. There's some movies that have portrayed this, yeah. by the way. Uh, I, one of them was uh, Ocean's Eleven. By the oh, way, okay. <laughs> so okay. they created an EMP. That's that, not the movie I thought you were going to say. No, it knocked out the power <laughs> grid to to Las Vegas, right. so they can complete their heist. But if all you right. do that, then you're taking out. You know how many satellites? There are thousands of yeah, satellites. It's a little And imprecise. not all of them are just your enemy's satellite in one zone. Everybody's got satellites crossing. It's it's It should be viewed as sort of sacred international space. Yeah. And it's not, like yeah. international waters. Hence the reason why we have Space Force, as you pointed out. Yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson, always a treat to have you here. Thank you. I'm finally here in person. Thank, I think we thank might have you done for, Zoom Thank you for explaining, explaining astrophysics to okay. us. We needed that tonight. All right.